everybody. Greetings once again from Chennai in South India. Today I'm briefly going to talk about the burning mouth syndrome or BMS. This strange enigmatic condition afflicting the human race goes by many synonyms. Glossopyrosis, essential glossodynia, somatopyrosis, stomatodynia, oral dysesthesia, glossalgia, psychogenic oral paresthesia, or in simple English, sore mouth. This confusing jargon of terminology goes to show that we are still not fully cognizant of the etiology and pathogenesis of BMS. And so to hide our ignorance, we hide behind a veil of Greek and Latin. ICOP, I-C-O-P, International Classification of Orofacial Pain, defines BMS as pain recurring every day lasting for more than two hours for three months or more with no evident causative factor on clinical examination or on investigation. Now, this is the best definition we can give at present with regard to BMS. Clinical features of BMS. The prevalence of BMS is between 0.1 to 4.6% in the general population with a definitely higher incidence in women. Most patients present with subjective sensation of pain in the mouth, particularly the tip of the tongue and the borders of the tongue, though it can occur anywhere inside the mouth. The quality of pain is often described as burning, tingling, hot, scalding, or unpleasant. The intensity of pain may vary from mild to extremely severe. Many patients also have coexistent xerostomia, dyspepsia, and halitosis. Our astute dental colleagues have also noted objective changes on careful examination of the mouth, such as one, frothy saliva, which usually indicates salivary hypofunction, two, dryness of the inner aspect of the lower lip, three, scalloping of the lateral margin of the tongue due to habitual pressure against teeth. Four, low-grade erythema of anterior dorsum of tongue and anterior hard palate. These are some of the things the, the, the dental surgeons are able to observe in some cases. As a dermatologist, we should look for clinical signs of nutritional deficiencies like angulostomatitis, contact dermatitis to dental fillings if they are there, erosive lichen planus, and geographic tongue, which may have been missed by the dental surgeons. And all of these have uh, uh, treatable causes. Investigations. Though there are no visible changes on clinical exam, a few baseline investigations are usually done in BMS. Full blood count, vitamin B1, B2, B6, B12, iron, folate, blood sugar and anti-rho antibodies. With later others can be added depending on the situation, clinical situation. Pathogenesis. Many theories have been proposed to explain the pain syndrome, but none totally satisfactory. A reasonably acceptable view is that the sensory portion of the trigeminal nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve interact with 
the gustatory fibers of the cauda tympani. This interaction occurs via both peripheral and central mechanisms. In BMS, it is also found that the small nerve fibers in the epithelium of the tongue have undergone atrophy. Endocrine and hormonal theories have also been proposed, but it is best to accept that at present, the answer to the etiology and pathogenesis of BMS lies with tomorrow. Management. There is no universally accepted protocol for BMS treatment. The most important initial step is to counsel the patient. This is to alleviate the fear that they all have that they've got a form of cancer in the mouth. And this is of paramount importance in a condition which has such a strong psychogenic background. The drug of choice for many treating physicians is clonazepam. This acts as an agonist of GABA, that is gamma amino butyric acid receptor. To start with, the drug can be used topically. A one milligram tablet is placed inside the mouth and in the tongue, it is pressed against the site of pain for about three minutes. Then it can be spat out. If this doesn't help, then the tablet can be swallowed orally. The dose being 0.5 to 2 milligrams per day. Best is to take it as a single dose because of its sedative effect. It can also cause giddiness, tiredness, and memory and gait problems. And hence, a patient should be under physician's observation. Alpha lipoic acid, ALA, has beneficial effects in patients with BMS either alone or combined with other drugs. It's very safe and has a wide therapeutic range, 200 to 800 milligrams. And it can be taken as a single dose or in divided doses. Patients may complain of mild headache and a little heartburn. It is a coenzyme and it has neuroprotective and antioxidant properties. Gabapentin, given along with this ALA, gives very good results in the majority of patients with BMS. Other drugs which have been found uh, useful are the N-acetylcysteine, which is actually specific for the uh, condition called trichotillomania, hair pulling ticks. It's also useful in BMS. The tricyclic antidepressants and the serotonin norepinephrine uptake inhibitors. All these have found place in the treatment of BMS. Cognitive behavior therapy and relaxation therapy should always be combined with the above uh, physical methods of treatment because of the strong psychological background of BMS. So the famous American dermatologist, Walter B. Shelley said, knowing the diagnosis is good, knowing the cause is better, but knowing the cure is best. So as far as BMS is concerned, we know how to give symptomatic relief to the suffering patient without understanding the etiology or the pathogenesis of the condition. Thank you.